Let me take this opportunity to just welcome everyone to this um, webinar this uh, afternoon, morning for some on building sustainable buyer relationships, looking at what buyers need from suppliers. My name is Marina Pizabani from the uh, USAID Trade and Investment Hub. I'm the Lesotho Country Representative and I will invite my uh, deputy chief of party mr george makore to deliver formal welcome remarks and then we get started thank you very much george please go ahead uh Lisekho, will you project for us thank you very much uh marina uh, good afternoon everybody and good morning to those that are in the u.s uh julie we were just about to send uh a search party for you. Um, I'm glad you are here now. Um, th th thanks very much, um, all of you, for attending uh, this um, webinar. I uh, believe it's a, it's a very important uh, webinar for our handicraft sector um, and uh, all the other suppliers that are looking at uh, exporting um, to the US. And, and some to South Africa. So uh, we, we believe this is very, very critical. Um, I'm waiting for uh, the slides, um, but I can go ahead and um, talk to uh, what is on the slides because I, I just wanted to make sure that you are seeing them as I talk to them. Um, now, as, as I was introduced by uh, Marina, my name is George Makore. Thanks very much, um, uh, Leseko. Uh, my name is George Makore, as it's uh, written in the slide there. I'm the Deputy Chief of Party for the USAID Southern Africa Trade and Investment Hub. Um, it's a long name. Uh, you can call us USAID Trader uh, in short. May I ask all those that are not speaking to please mute? Uh, so that we don't get feedback uh, you, and you can unmute when you are presenting. Thank you very much. So um, as the USID trader, um, our role really is to um, increase sustainable um, economic growth and uh, global export competitiveness um, in the region and, and trade in the region. And how do we do that? We work, uh, we do that through uh, three main objectives. Uh, and we work in um, eight of the 16 SADAC countries. Um, for those that do not know SADAC, Southern Africa um, Development Community, which is our economic, uh, regional economic uh, community. Um, and we, only cover eight, can eight countries out of the 16 countries that are within that community. In the eight countries uh, led by South Africa, and uh, besides South Africa, we then have seven other countries. And the seven other countries are Botswana, Eswatini, Lesotho, um, Namibia, Malawi, uh, Zambia, and Mozambique. Um, I normally uh, want to refer um, uh, to them as SACU three because the other five countries are under the Southern Africa Customs Union, um, which is led by South Africa, as well as uh, the three that are outside SACU, which are Malawi, uh, Mozambique, and Zambia. So in those countries, what we do is that we, uh, the first objective is uh, realizing that South Africa is a big market uh, with uh, times four um, of the uh, GDP gross domestic product of the seven countries uh, put together. Uh, there is a lot of demand in South Africa for products uh, that are produced in the region. So our role is to identify the demand in South Africa uh, and the buyers who would want to import uh, products from the seven countries out of the eight that I mentioned. And we then identify potential suppliers uh, from the seven countries. 
and we then get them to do trade, uh, trade between uh, the South African buyers and the uh, potential suppliers from the seven countries. So that's our first, first objective, which is really aimed at increasing exports from uh, the Southern African countries that I mentioned uh, to South Africa. The second objective uh, linked to that trade idea is uh, where we look at the eight countries that uh, I mentioned and identify producers uh, who are looking for markets uh, in the United States. Um, and part of what we are uh, discussing today is, uh, actually what we're discussing today is linked to that. So we then uh, find uh, help with uh, all the uh, people that you are seeing here and others uh, try and identify buyers in the United States who will be looking for products uh, from the eight countries uh, in the region, taking advantage of what is called the um, African Growth and Opportunity Act uh, program, uh, AGOA in short, which allows uh, products uh, that are eligible uh, from the eight countries to go to the US duty-free. So the important aspect there is uh, it is a, 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 an opportunity for companies in the region to export their products or to get their products into the US without paying duty. And that gives the companies uh, an advantage over countries that will be uh, charged the duty. So that is our second objective, which is mainly aimed at uh, increasing utilization of the AGOA program. The third objective is mainly aimed at uh, facilitating um, the could be producers to be able to produce and export um, uh, the products, where be it uh, the seven countries exporting to South Africa or the eight countries exporting to the US. And uh, this is done by identifying their uh, investment needs. And in this case, we are looking at both uh, fun, fi finance or capital, uh, as well as uh, technology uh, that will help them to increase uh, production of the products. And we then link uh, those um, companies that would have indicated uh, a need for funding or technology we identify uh, would be invest investors uh, in South Africa. So here we're looking at investors in South Africa who are willing to invest in the seven countries uh, that I mentioned. So those are the three main activities uh, that uh, uh, we carry out or that we do as uh, the USAID trader. Next slide, please, uh, Lisa. Go. Okay, so having said that, uh, now that uh, uh, you know me, you know uh, uh, what the uh, USAID trade up does, I just wanted also to highlight that uh, we do have amongst uh, ourselves here um, uh, participants from different countries, uh, mainly looking at the countries that I said we serve as the project. And um, we do have participants from Botswana, we have participants from Eswatini, uh, Lesotho, Malawi, Mozambique, uh, Namibia, South Africa, and Zambia. So we are looking at uh, all the countries that we uh, work in being represented. Uh, I might also have missed some participants that uh, not uh, that, that didn't register early, uh, but are here with us. Uh, I welcome all of you and especially those that uh, uh, have joined us uh, from outside uh, the continent of Africa. And I would like to take this opportunity to wish everybody a very uh, fruitful uh, discussion, very fruitful discussions, and ensure that, uh, I'm sure that we will find this um, webinar very beneficial. Um, with those words, uh, I would like to then take us to the program for the day and uh, what I would want to call our roadmap uh, for this afternoon. Um, so what we have here 
is um, if I can uh, be able to see this slide. Um, we have a, a number of um, very uh, well knowledgeable and experienced uh, presenters, uh, a good lineup of presenters that we're going to be listening to today. And uh, this, uh, I know the, there's uh, going to be a lot of excitement and we might actually uh, um, not be able to watch our time. So I want to make sure that we will be able to stick to the time that we've allocated for this uh, webinar and we will not keep you beyond the time that uh, we have uh, allocated here. Um, at this stage, I would like to call upon uh, Marina uh, to come back and take us through uh, the program. I would like to again wish you all the best and um, a fruitful uh, uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, uh, George, for the good and detailed um, welcome remarks. And um, going forward now, my role is to now introduce our fantastic panel of speakers. I'm very excited. They're going to deliver uh, some brief presentations on some of the critical success factors to get our products into the market, uh, the US market, competitively. And this is how it's going to flow. We will not have a Q&A session, question and answer session in this particular session after their presentations. We're going to have uh, uh, something much nicer at a much later stage. Thank you for projecting the, uh, the, the agenda, Lesejo, because after the presentations that uh, our buyers are going to deliver, we're going to have uh, three breakaway sessions that are allocated according to the three different themes that patients are going to center around. We're going to have a session on communications, logistics, and shipping. We're going to have a session on storytelling. We're going to have another session on capacity and costing. So please be expectant uh, to receive a very empowering uh, uh, sessions as well as interactions. I will come back at the end of their presentations to sort of guide us as to how we go to our different uh, uh, interactive uh, sessions, which will be very briefly because uh, we're all here and we did attend uh, pre-run sessions before the webinar. So let me take this opportunity to go straight ahead and introduce to us uh, Julie. Julie Hi. is um, the founder of SWIFT. SWIFT is a Swaziland uh, fair trade and it facilitates trade promotion opportunities both in Swaziland, in the region and uh, internationally. We've worked very closely with Julie here at the USAID uh, Trade and Investment Hub. Some of you have interacted with her directly because she's been uh, helping us to develop uh, a lookbook that is going to be used to promote some of the products that you make as our suppliers uh, in the region and also in the uh, United States of America. So Julie is gonna take us briefly through uh, highlights of the lookbook following which we are going to have um, Annie, who is the founder of AOW Handmade. And we will also have Stacey Edgar, who is the founder of Global Girlfriend. And we have Kim also with us, who is from Bridge for Africa. So maybe without uh, any further ado, let me allow uh, you, Julie, to take us through with the first presentation that will highlight um, some of the key features of uh, the lookbook and then following you we will have uh, different presentations by our buyers i'll step off stage for some time just so that i can provide enough space for you to project the presentations and they become nice and visible to our participants and then i'll come back after the last presentation and then give uh, some guidance on how we go into the breakaway sessions for interactive discussions thank you Hi, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're all well. Um, thank you for joining us. We know everyone is super busy. Um, we wanted to say thank you to USAID and the Southern African um, Investment Please go ahead, Trade. Julie, and take us on. You can unmute your mic now and then, uh, okay, I've just unmuted it. <laughs> so please go ahead. 
Hi, everybody, and welcome. Thank you so much for giving up your important time. We appreciate it, and we hope that you will find this um, an interesting and a learning experience as well. Um, we'd like to say thank you to the Hub. As Marina said, we've been working with them to help create market linkage opportunities for enterprises within in Southern Africa. Um, the craft and the beauty and the talent of the artisanal world in Africa is astonishing. And we are so fortunate to have four amazing buyers with us who all believe in what we do here in Africa. And Stacy, Annie, Kim, Susie, thank you so much. We know how busy you are and we really appreciate you being here with us. And um, what we have been doing with the hub recently is we started off with a needs assessment for the whole of Southern Africa because we want to know what your needs are so that we can do programming to meet those needs. And we had over 50 submissions altogether from Southern Africa and the top 30 have now gone into the lookbook. And Lesega, would you be able to project the lookbook for us, please? Um, in the lookbook, the criteria to be in the lookbook was export readiness, responsiveness. You, we have to be responsive to buyers. You'll learn more um, later in the session, but being able to reply to an email immediately is important. A 24-hour communication response time. And then we looked at the products, the products and the quality. Um, and then we made the selections from there. So this is what um, the lookbook is, is going to look like. We have um, over 30 small enterprises from across the region in the lookbook. Let's have a look at, and some of you are in the lookbook, I can see from who joined today. So be able to see some of your pages. Could we um, go to the next slide? So that's just a little introduction. And as you can see, these are the countries that are represented. We have Botswana, Eswatini, Lesotho, Malawi, Mozambique, and Namibia. Next slide. So what we've done is the lookbook has been broken into categories. And um, this is Botswana. I'm sure there's some Botswana crafters on the platform. And then each of the companies that are represented in the lookbook will be receiving these pages themselves so they can use them for their own marketing because we believe that we capacitate all the time. Next, we can just scroll through, let's say, go some of the, the pages so people can have a look. And then what we'll be doing with the lookbook is we'll be sharing it um, with the buyers you see here on the platform and then other buyers. And hopefully the plan is to link you to buyers. And in the future, we're going to be bringing the buyers to Southern Africa so they can meet you in person, which is exciting. And hopefully, now that a vaccine is on the horizon, we're going to be able to travel safely within the next year or so. So this is the start of the project. It's not the end. And we will hopefully be seeing you all in person one day. But as you can see from the lookbook, the quality and the diversity of products is astonishing. And Hand, handmade in, in Africa, it should be seen by the world, it should be appreciated by the world. And I'm really glad that we have this panel of four amazing women that already do this, they're already reaching out to Africa, they already buy from Africa, because they believe in what we do. So as I said, we just made a short introduction to the lookbook. Um, all the countries are represented there. And then I'm going to now hand you over when we get to the end, I'm going to hand you over to the buying team. And I believe Kim and Susie, you're in the hot seat first. And then we followed by Annie and then by Stacy. So thank you, everybody. I hope you, you love it. We love it. And let's get working together and let's grow our exports.
Thanks, Julie. I am going to go ahead and try and share my screen. And I think our order is a little different. I think we've got Annie uh, first, <clears throat> but hang on one second. Okay, do you see that? We do. Awesome, let me put it in presenter mode and welcome you to the Artisan Business Tips and Insights. Um, and we'll each introduce ourselves as we get to our slides. So, oops. Uh, today we're going to discuss with you storytelling, which will be led by Annie Waterman. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about capacity building, costing, um, and who is your customer. And then we will have the fabulous Kim and Susie from uh, Bridge for Africa, who will talk about communication, shipping, and logistics. So shall I start? Okay. Please, Annie. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hi everyone, um, my name is Annie Waterman and I am excited to be here with all of you. Um, to give you a little bit of background about me, I have been working in the artisan field for quite some time, I think about 14 years now. And um, uh, the name of my business is AOW Handmade and I help connect buyers with artisan suppliers. And um, so I work one-on-one -on -one with brands to help connect them to the right partners and I also rep artisan producers these days. So uh, due to COVID, I've actually found that to be a, kind of a good model for me. So basically, buyers come to me and tell me their needs, and then I help connect them to the artisan partners that I represent. Um, and I also work one-on-one -on -one with artisan brands with their marketing strategies. So um, we can go to the next slide, uh, Stacy. Okay, so today I'm going to be just briefly talking about uh, storytelling and the key elements here. So um, I myself as a rep for artists and producers, I really, I need to help, I need to tell your stories essentially. So I really see a lot of value in storytelling uh, through marketing. So basically um, it's a way for, you to connect to the consumer, right, through strong visuals and photography. But the first thing to consider is what is your own positioning? Are you a brand or are you producer? So you can't really market yourself until that's very clear, right, because it's two different strategies. Um, one key thing that I can't stress enough is really focusing on your specialty. So buyers will meet so many different artists and groups and you know, if you say you offer textile, ceramics, glass, yada, 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 buyers will not remember you. But if you focus on your specialty and really truly be an expert in what you do, you'll be much more likely to be remembered from a buyer's perspective. Um, then, of course, you're, you have so many stories to tell, right? So you being based in Africa have the advantage because you are there in Africa and can take beautiful images of the products, the techniques, um, the stories, the people, everything. So I think this is such a good time to focus on storytelling and gathering that information for your buyers and your clients so they can tell those stories to the end consumer. Um, so again, it's so important to have strong photography, strong text to tell these stories because really, it's connecting the consumer to your product because if you're competing with, you know, China, essentially, uh, you have to prove that your products are of value and you can do that by really connecting product to people. So we can go to the next slide. Um, I really suggest all of you guys, either if you're either a producer or a brand, uh, to really create a strong set of images. So work on, if you can, hire a professional photographer uh, to, you know, um, take beautiful portraits of the artists making your products, 
You don't have to hire a professional. This is only if you have the funding. There's a lot you can do with your cell phone. Um, but if you can, professional photography is definitely recommended. But take photos, beautiful portrait shots of the artist, you know, really nice, clear images of the product. So um, you, you also need images of the process, of the materials, of the, the craft, of the countryside, a little bit of everything to, you know, color, texture, inspiration to really help uh, tell these stories of who is behind your product, how are they being made, and kind of the inspiration, the, the sense of place so people can really connect with these products and um, be wooed by the beauty, really. And so it's so important for you to have these images because uh, the next slide uh, we can see, you know, there's so much you can do with the images. You can, once you invest in a nice set of, of images, you can use them, you know, throughout the course of your entire business. For example, you can use these photographs in your newsletters, on your website. You can send them to your clients so your clients can then tell your story. You can use them on Instagram, social media. So it's not like you're using these photographs just one time. I mean, I invested in maybe, uh, I invested in 10 photographs when I first started my business and I used them for all of my marketing materials within the templates of my newsletters. It, they really help um, kind of distinguish your brand in a way. So strong photography, strong storytelling, really investing in those visuals is so, so, so important. So I will leave it at that. And uh, thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much, Annie. Uh, I will quickly introduce myself. My name is Stacy Edgar, and uh, I run a consulting company called Stacy Edgar Consulting. And I also teach at the University of Colorado Lead School of Business in uh, sustainability and social resp responsibility. I founded a business called Global Girlfriend in 2003 and grew that from a $2,000 personal investment to a business selling uh, about $2 million annually in women-made fair trade uh, craft from around the world. I've worked a lot in Southern Africa and absolutely know that uh, you have a gold mine of amazing products. Um, currently, I do consulting for businesses. I do research and development. We're doing, if anyone's here from Zambia, we're doing a big value chain project in Zambia right now. Um, and I also do some buying and some sourcing for a few particular clients. So, oh, and I also am one of the co-founders of Trade Plus Impact Association, which is a trade association for women-led social enterprises in Africa and the Middle East. So I want to talk to you quickly about um, a few things. First of all, who is your buyer? To any point, uh, you really have to know your position in the marketplace. Are you a producer or do you want to be an artisan brand, come out with your own brand? And then who are you trying to sell your product to? This is really important. Um, and two of the key things that tie into this is what is your capacity? How much can you make? How many employees or artisan producers do you have? And then how do you cost your product? So a few things to ask yourself, to, things to know about your business, because these are things your buyer will want to know, is what's the range of materials and your range of price points. Sometimes um, buyers come to you with product ideas and they want to know that full range of what you can make. Can you produce custom designs provided by the buyer? Have you worked with spec sheets before? Um, a spec sheet is a buyer sends you directions, right? Kind of a, a recipe or a pattern of what they want made with specific measurements, colors, things like that. Can you produce to that kind of direction? What is your capacity uh, and production and delivery lead time. This is really important. If a buyer comes and says, I would like 200 pieces of that particular item, let's say a basket, you need to have an idea of how long that will take. 
what is your capacity? How many baskets can be made in what period of time? One thing I really recommend, if this is something that you're not sure about or you don't know, is that you do a small time study. A time study is really asking each producer in your, your value chain to time how long it takes them to make a basket and to make sure that they're not counting time when they're not working on it. Oftentimes, when we work with artists and businesses, we have home workers. We have people working from their home, and they may not be working a regular eight-hour workday. They have a lot of other responsibilities that they might be taking care of while also making your product. So having a time study, knowing your capacity, also knowing if you got a large order, do you have um, contract artisans that you could add to your value chain? who are flexible and might come on and produce for you, but still produce at that quality that you need. Um, what is your infrastructure to support your customers and buyers? Julie started out by saying, you absolutely have to be in good communication with your buyers. Never forget this. You want to communicate even if you don't have the right answer. And even if what you have to say is we're gonna be late or things aren't going as we expected, Buyers will trust you. They will have a long-term relationship with you if you have a way of communicating and supporting them. And it's even easier today than ever. I have to say, I ran a business for almost 18 years and I had very few Zoom meetings uh, before COVID happened. Now we're all used to hopping on a video platform and having a face-to-face -face chat. Use that to your advantage. Invite your buyers to Skype or Zoom. Um, and see them face to face. Know if you need a deposit and don't be afraid to ask for it. Have your terms set up front. Um, make sure your margins can support volume discounts. If a big buyer comes to you and says, oh, I want a thousand pieces, but I need them at this price, really have a good idea. And we'll talk about that in a minute, your costing. Um, and then do you have the infrastructure to support complex uh, demands of a high volume retailer. We recently did a program with Williams Sonoma. So that's the Pottery Barn brand and the West Elm brand. And some of the artisans that we had on that event have gotten inquiries and they're trying to figure out, can I actually support a, a big buyer like that? So have a good idea. And then do you have branded products to Annie's point or do you make products under other people's brands? I won't go through this whole chart, but this is something that um, I am sure the Trade Hub can share out with you our presentation from today If for any of you who want to have this on hand. Um, but one thing to look at is, you know, where do you fit? Who do you want to sell to in the North American marketing channel? So in this chart, I have um, the profit per unit and the profit per order. Just for an example, if you sell direct to a consumer, so you send something to me in the United States, you put it up on a website or on Etsy and I purchase it, you might have a high profit for that unit, that one basket, but um, it's a low profit order, right? Because it's just one piece. The shipping cost is gonna be extremely high and obviously the volume is low. I'm an individual person, so I can't buy a lot of baskets. I, I might not order again. Um, customization is not required, so that's easy. And you do have your branding on your product. The next level is maybe selling to a small shop, one boutique or retailer, then a larger retailer, um, and then an importer or distributor. So at Global Girlfriend and at Bridge for Africa, uh, we bought, we used to buy, and uh, Kim and Susie still, buy high volume that we stock and then sell to other stores. And so that's what that importer distributor piece is. You might have a little lower margin per unit, but you get a higher volume. So when thinking about who you can sell to and, and how you want to sell, you want to look at uh, costing and pricing your product. So 
what are the costs to you, the supplier, and also to all the artisans in your value chain? Because some of you may be producing yourself. Uh, some of you may have employees who work in a workshop and others of you may have uh, home workers who work for you and produce for you. So know your material costs, your labor costs per unit, any additional costs for tagging or packing or overhead, do you have a social impact fund? Do you have a group savings? Do you put a little piece of margin for each product for that? Um, and then your margin per unit that's covering your overhead and covering your profit, uh, total that up. Then there's the import cost. Uh, this is, right, you take the number of units in the shipment, you figure out, is there local um, shipping? Do you need to truck? Uh, what's the international shipping cost per unit? What's the duty that your importer or your buyer is going to have to pay? The clearance costs they'll have to pay, these all need to be factored in. And you work with your buyer on figuring these out. Um, but your main part to focus on is your supplier cost per unit. Where do you have margin? Where do you have costs? I have this as an online calculator that I'd be happy to share with everyone the link in the chat. Uh, finally, know your terms. Again, this gets back to your capacity. Know your lead times. Have payment terms. If the buyer asks you, what are your payment terms? I expect 50% upfront at the time of the order, or I expect 60% upfront or 30% or I don't need a deposit under orders of this time. Sometimes it's really good to have a deposit with first orders when you don't know a buyer, but you may have different terms for a long-term relationship. Can you customize? How much can you customize? Uh, how many pieces do you have to make if you're customizing, right? Like what, what are all those terms? What are your volume discounts? Do you have a break at 50 pieces, 100 pieces? How many pieces can you make in a week or a month? And then how do you do your quality control? Because as we grow and do more volume, we need to be sure that we're delivering that customer, the perfect customer order. We want that customer, that order to be quality controlled. Uh, FOB, I will leave it to Susie and Kim to talk about. And then you also want to know if you start working with a wholesale partner who's a distributor for you, and then you get an inquiry. So say you were selling to Susie and Kim and they were distributing to stores, and then you got an inquiry from another wholesaler or another store directly. Talk with your current partner, figure out a plan. You want to be loyal to those who are promoting your products. Thanks so much, and I look forward to talking to you more in the breakout rooms. I will hand it over to Susie and Kim. Thank you, Stacy. You can hear me, right? Yes, got my video on. I am Kim Vaughn. My name's Kim Vaughn. I'm with Bridge for Africa, and I joined Bridge for Africa in 2011. Bridge was born in 2004. My sister-in-law started it. And we stepped in to run it um, in 2011 and have been going since then. And it's getting better and bigger every single year. So it's been so rewarding. Um, thank you, everybody, for putting this on today. It is so exciting to be part of it. We appreciate all the work involved to get this going and running. Um, we are based in Colorado, really far from Africa. So... As far as communication, that's what I am going to be going over, and it is so, so important. Um, we would love to be in Africa visiting every year, but that just doesn't happen. So we, uh, we depend on email. That's basically the basis of our communication. And as you've heard, um, being responsive, super, super important. I mean, it's a daily event, uh, emailing our artisans and going over a uh, orders or the shipments or the products, lead times. Um, we also give feedback on our trade shows and how their products are being seen on this side of the world. So um, really, really important to uh, have that be um, our connection. Um, and the last couple months, I have to say, through this COVID situation, that's been something very positive for us, is Zoom and Skype. We are now 
face to face with our artisans, which it's actually been amazing. It's so much better than the email. I mean, example is we um, currently are working on new products with a couple of our artisan groups. So we would be, you know, in the past emailing back and forth and giving ideas and kind of going through it and looking at pictures. Now we could actually be on a Skype or a Zoom call and our artisan would be showing us the product just like this so we could see the shape, the colors, and talk about it face to face, which has been amazing. So much more, um, it's so much better. And we could say, great, love it, or hey, can you tweak it? We need a little bigger, or maybe a couple new colors in there. Um, but it's just been, if you can take advantage of this, it's been, it's just been amazing for us. We have absolutely loved it. Um, the next uh, item that we actually utilize a lot with our artisans is the catalogs and the price lists. We use that. That's our that's gold to us. So looking at your products, the measurements, the US um, dollar amount that we will be purchasing it at, um, materials used, um, all really, really important. And as you've heard, what sells is the story. So it, it is amazing. It's amazing what it does for the product. So we will receive this product. Um, and we will ask the artisan, tell us everything. You know, we want to know the material used or the um, about the artisan, the price, your environment. Um, how long did it take to make? Was it hours? Was it days? So that we can come and share this with our with our buyers. So we will take your story. And then we will go to, let's say, our trade shows, which is one of our biggest sources of selling. And we will have talking to hundreds of buyers at those shows. And the buyers will say, this is great. If I have this in the store, can you tell us something about it? We'd love to know the story of this basket that we'll be selling in our store. So we will share your story with them. And then they will have it in their store. And a customer will come up and say, hey, I love this basket. Can you tell me something about this basket? I mean, we're giving back and we'd love to know where this is going and how it's helping the artisans in Africa. So the story is really, it's everything. I mean, it all starts with your hands. That's the beautiful part of it and, uh, and how it's made and, and customer wants to just feel it when they, when they see it and, and picture how it's being made. So this, the story is really huge. When we um, get our products, also what we love to have is the product tag, which is which is key. We love it. Our buyers love it. The customers love it. So just a, a tag doesn't have to be that big with a little bit of blurb about your artisan group, which is which is very helpful for everybody all 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 the way through. Um, photographs, as you heard, is huge. We love the photographs the artisan in process of making the product, um, your environment when it's being made, uh, beautiful pictures and images, all different, all different ways you can show it. We use those. We use those through our websites and our channeling and it's very, very much appreciated. So if you can do that, that's great. Um, another um, websites, as you know, I think you all have websites which is great thank you so much for the lookbook it was amazing and i see on there that you've um you have websites and you're outreaching to instagram and facebook that is something we all need to be doing because it is huge right now social media being consistent and updating and we we refer to the websites a lot that's where we get ideas about um our stories and your products and Anything you can put on the website for us is essential. I mean, it's great. That, um, that I think, is pretty much it. To, to sum up is the, the responsiveness in emails. And if you can do Zoom, um, your stories, which is huge to us, the product, any details about your product, um, websites, keep them updated and and have everything you can on the website for us. And then social media, Instagram, Facebook, however you can outreach is, is key. 
Thank you so much. I hope I can help you in the end with any questions you have. And I will pass the baton to my sidekick, Susie Runyon. All right. And I get the exciting topic of shipping and logistics. <laughs> it's important, not the most exciting aspect of your business, but still important. Um, yeah, I am Susie Runyon. I'm Kim's sidekick. Uh, I've been with Bridge for Africa for 10 years. Kim and I um, kind of took over at the same time, and um, it's been an exciting ride. Um, a learning experience along the way, completely. Everything, in fact, for this presentation, I was learning terms about shipping I never knew. So I'm going to mostly go from my experience and how we handle shipping and logistics, but just the most important thing, and everybody um, built on this, was the importance of communicating. Um, the first thing you'll do is you'll communicate with your um, buyer about what kind of terms and um, shipping options you're going to, there's all kinds of shipping terms and options. The purpose is to help make shipping agreements easier to set up between a seller and a buyer. It clarifies who holds the risk, the responsibility, and cost. Um, the two that I'm gonna talk about um, is number one, FOB. It's um, free on board, also referred to as freight on board. Um, this typically apply, applies to shipping by sea, um, where the seller is responsible for getting goods to the shipper. Um, the costs and the risks are the sellers until the goods are loaded on the ship. And then from that point on, the buyer takes over responsibility and costs. Um, the second type or uh, term is EXU, which is XWorks. Um, the buyer is responsible for collecting the goods and getting to the shipper. Um, XWorks places the maximum responsibility on the buyer. This is a good option to use, especially when you're new in the business and you're working with a, a buyer for the first time, it, it helps out a lot. This is how we ship with all our suppliers. Um, the second um, option, and there's all different kinds of op options, but the second um, thing is to figure out how you're gonna ship by sea or um, by air, um, courier services. Um, we ship everything by air. Um, we work with a freight forwarding company um, and we, the logistics of it are different for each artisan group we work with. Um, one supplier, she hires a courier to deliver to the freight forwarding companies. Um, warehouse. Um, one of our groups has a truck and he piles up his boxes and drives them and avoids the, the courier costs. Um, we have one group we work with that are in a very remote area. They somehow get their boxes to another one of our suppliers who then consolidates them all and, and delivers um, to the freight forwarding company. Um, we also use DHL. Um, that's a awesome option if you can handle the cost. <laughs> they do door-to-door -door service, so everything, the paperwork, pickup, um, all the expenses are, are covered. And then, but uh, on the downside, it, it's a lot more expensive, um, but sometimes necessary if you need things quickly for whatever reason. Uh, let's see, what else? The, the, the biggest thing is the advantage to um, knowing and communicating with your buyer and having a relationship. And the Zoom, like everyone else said, is a great tool. Um, the advantage is you can be flexible, you can figure out what works for each, each of you and be creative about shipping. Okay, then the third thing is price point. You all, like um, Stacy was talking about, you really do need to factor, even if the buyer is, is the one covering the cost, that's all factored in to your price point. Um, so that's something that calculate, that sounds like an awesome tool. I encourage all of you to, to use that. In fact, I might try to use it too. <laughs> 
Okay, next slide. Okay, so so just some responsibilities um, for the seller um, in the shipping process. Um, you're responsible, obviously, to pack the materials, and that means you know using sturdy boxes, good packing material. If you have breakables, you need to make sure that they're um, wrapped efficiently. Um, you want to fit as much as you can in one box. So if you have baskets that you can put smaller baskets inside or you can fit little things around your larger items, just make sure that each box is packed efficiently. Um, you need to arrange the courier service. Even if you're not the one paying for this, you're going to invoice the buyer for the cost, um, it's helpful for you to be able to make those arrangements um, to pick up the boxes. And then you also need to um, supply the documentation, invoices and packing slips with the boxes. Um, for the buyer, the responsibilities are, one, you know, they're going to work with the freight forwarding company to get the scheduling, the flight scheduled and or whatever, whatever bookings and all the paperwork. And then after that, they'll arrange, once it are, is booked on the flight, we'll arrange for the customs clearance and all the other clearances, inspections and everything, and arrange for the pickup and transportation to the warehouse. And the fun part, paying all the costs. <laughs> So, um, and there are a lot of costs and they, you know, just to factor all those in um, is, is really important. And then we get to unpack all your beautiful handmade products and, and enjoy selling them to, to our buyers. So um, I look forward to answering questions or talking more in detail about any of this or anything else. Um, and thank you. Wow, uh, a great uh, thank you to our presenters. The lookbook is very good. The information uh, shared here in different presentation is wealth, really. I'm sure our suppliers are itching to ask uh, uh, questions and interact with our presenters, our buyers. So what we're going to do now is to, um, to leave this session and join specific interactive sessions to ask questions. And the sessions are clearly labeled in, in, in terms of uh, themes. And the good thing is that you can choose any session that you want uh, uh, to go into and ask questions, and you can go into different sessions, move Rome from one session to another and interact with um, our buyers. So this is what we're going to do for the next 20 minutes. We should come back at 20 past in, in 20 minutes time. Yes, it's 10, 10 minutes too. So we, we, we will take 20 minutes and visit the booths and we will have moderators in there to guide us. We'll also have a buyer in there to take our questions. So you leave this session and then you go on the left side, you click on sessions, and then you choose an interactive session that you want to get into. And then in the next 20 minutes, we'll all come back and meet in the plenary session for a way forward. We will announce, we'll keep on doing uh, um, timekeeping and announce when it's time to get back into the plenary session. Thank you so much to our presenters. We may now go to our interactive sessions and interact with our suppliers. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello, Dr. George. Hello, Marina. Hi, Susie. Welcome back. Hello. How did it go? It was fantastic. It was really good. I was going around the different sessions. Uh huh. Uh, there were really um, not a lot of questions, questions, interactions. They were active, so it's really good. Uh, some were asking in chat uh, sessions, and then others were actually sharing their videos and audio and speaking. I, I came through your session as well. Oh, good, good. Great. So, uh, Okay, there. welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Okay, welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome back to the main session. Uh, I hope we all found it easy to navigate the system to move from one session to another in order to be able to engage uh, with questions. I found it very easy. I managed to move across the three different sessions and found quite uh, intense discussions in there. So I, I was very happy. So maybe as, as we um, come almost to the end of our webinar, let me just ask that as we continue, if you had a, 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 a great interactive session, just type on the side there and on chat and just type the word great. I would really love to see that feedback. How many of us would say it was great? Just type there, great. And I know you had a great interactive uh, session. And um, oh, I see the greats are coming through. So yes, it looks like we had a great uh, uh, webinar session. Okay. The presentations will be shared with all uh, participants and also uh, recordings of this webinar and other past uh, webinars that we've had will be accessible on our website, www.satihub.com. I'm not sure if my colleague, Lesekho, is on stage to project that for us. Lesekho or Renele, just so uh, participants can see where to access um, past webinars and uh, presentations. Okay, I see Lisekho has just stepped in. She will uh, project that uh, for us. So you can always uh, revisit, uh, but, but please do note that uh, for this session, the breakaway sessions have not been captured on the recording, so you will get this plenary session, which is the one that's really rich uh, with the presentations that were delivered by our buyers uh, and presenters. If, if, if that is visible, you can go to the right side of uh, the screen. There's an arrow that's pointing at the number of participants. If you click there, it will make your screen a little bigger so you'll be able to see what's been projected um, on the presentation on the screen. And let me also take this opportunity to say that we also have other good upcoming uh, events, though not uh, really handicrafts. Those would um, probably be you and uh, to some in your networks. 
We have uh, accessing new trade in Southern Africa and the US. It's coming up November 27th and will be held in partnership with Nelson Mandela Bay Business Chambers. Then we have the role of digital platforms webinar. This will be held in partnership with capital providers, uh, called Setvest Capital and Neo Capital. This will be on the 2nd of December. Invitations will come out. And then we'll have another interesting one with uh, trade and investment promotion, uh, uh, as well as trade promotion service uh, providers, which is a meet and greet opportunity for trade promotion partners to meet. And there will be some speed dating that will be happening on there on the 3rd of December. And then we will also have a US Southern Africa specialty food B2B webinar. And the date is yet to be announced, but uh, for invitations will be sent out for those that will be in that uh, category. I saw that there are those that are making some um, marula oils. I don't know if it's on the edible side or it's uh, just on the cosmetic side, but uh, invitations will be sent through. Maybe let me at this point in time ask if Julie, Julie, are you on stage? Yes, I can see Tammy there. If you can just uh, maybe give us briefly what's going to happen with the um, with the lookbook, uh, how it's going to be distributed going forward, just briefly before I hand over to my colleague, Doug Gru, to deliver closing remarks. Thank you, Marina. And the lookbook is going to be shared to um, a specific buyer pool, um, and hopefully we'll be able to link enterprises that the buyers are interested in. And then we're also going to be sending it to all the participants and um, all the trade promotion units of all the countries that are featured. And then that can be put on their websites. So it's a, marketing is critical. Um, I heard Annie say earlier that getting your story out there is important. And that's what this lookbook is aimed at doing. It's aimed at getting the stories out and sharing these beautiful products um, across the world. So those are the next steps for the lookbook. We're waiting for the final um, approval. And once we have that, it's gonna be shared um, across the world. Thanks. And thank you again to the buying team. You guys are amazing and your presentations were incredible. Thank you. Absolutely incredible. Thank you very much, uh, Julie. And let me also thank uh, our team that was uh, doing the moderations as well and harvesting questions that partnered uh, with our buyers teams in the interactive sessions. Fantastic job. Um, Daguru, uh, maybe I'll have to step out and create space for you to come through so that you can deliver uh, closing remarks. If Doug is not able to join, I see we still have our deputy chief of parties, so we are still good. Doug, are you able to come up on stage and just deliver uh, closing remarks in the next three minutes? Okay, welcome, Doug. You see on the screen that it says uh, Sim Dube, Portfolio Manager for Southern Africa Trade and Investment Hub. So Doug will explain why his face is different from that one that is on the screen. Please, <laughs> Doug. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Marina. Uh, I'm stepping in for Sim, uh, who is uh, uh, st uh, stepped out to attend to some uh, agent uh, issues. Uh, but all the same, uh, we work as a team, and we've been working together with Sim on this activity. So um, I just wanted to thank everyone, uh, especially our partner, uh, Swift, uh, for pulling off this great event. Uh, this has been one of the most uh, wonderful events, and we really uh, thank SWIFT for working hard alongside the USA Trade, Trade Hub uh, uh, colleagues to pull off this event, uh, and we are very happy for the way it has uh, turned out. And I also just want to thank our buyers. Uh, you've been with us organizing this event and uh, following through uh, with your presentations and interacting with our suppliers uh, I really uh, want to thank you for this uh, uh, wonderful uh, session that uh, you have uh, presented to our suppliers. Uh, above all, just wanted to uh, echo the, uh, what my colleague Marina has said uh, in terms of the next steps. Uh, I think it's very important that we follow through uh, with the activities from uh, uh, these sessions. Uh, these sessions are meant 
uh, to help our uh, suppliers from the region for them to achieve the USA trade up goals, uh, which is uh, to increase exports uh, for handmade and accessories uh, from the Southern African region to the US, uh, but also to South Africa. So uh, please follow up uh, with the contacts that you have generated from this session. Uh, most importantly, uh, reach out to the country teams, uh, each and every of these countries where the USA Trade Hub is working. There are personnel in those countries that are responsible uh, for making sure that you get the best uh, out of the services that the USA Trade Hub offers. So I just want to urge you, uh, our suppliers from the region, to maximize uh, your utilization of these opportunities by reaching out to us uh, in Malawi, uh, in Botswana, we have Khalid, and uh, uh, in Eswatini, there's Tami and Tim there. And then you find in Lesotho, Marina, uh, in Malawi, I'm here, uh, very lady and eager with my colleague Nelly to support you. Uh, we have uh, Honolata in Mozambique, and uh, uh, we also have a team in Zambia, uh, and also uh, in Namibia, as well as uh, uh, in South Africa. So reach out to us so that we are able uh, to work together and be able to uh, uh, make sure that you are able to export uh, to the US and South Africa. Uh, with these few remarks, I thank you all and uh, wishing you uh, all the best and good evening to those in Southern Africa and good uh, afternoon to our colleagues in the US. Or oh, is it morning? Uh, so have a great uh, evening, colleagues. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doug, and uh, thank you very much to everyone. Enjoy the rest of the day and the evening. Dr. George, thank you very much for your support, leadership, and guidance. Thank you. You're most welcome.